This is Cherry, my KTM 390 adventure, and me, Alona. And in this season, we're traveling around Peru, Ecuador, and Colombia. We love gorgeous views, beautiful roads, and we don't mind a little bit of challenge. Let's go exploring! Good morning! Cherry and I are ready to leave Baños. Gracias, Fabricio. Hasta luego. Woo. Goodbye, Baños. Whee. One very important thing. Had to stop and leave my sticker, of course. And now we're officially on the way <laughs> so today we are starting our way towards Loja I'm taking the Amazon route again so I'm kind of backtracking now along the same road towards Puyo but in a few kilometers I'm gonna take a deviation and do a little bit of off-roading about 40 kilometers and then there will be another stretch of off-road a bit later today well, let's see, <laughs> let's see how uh, adventurous or difficult it's gonna be. I have no idea if it has rained in that area because here the weather changes like every few kilometers. So it can rain in one place and not rain in another. Like here in Banyos the last two days the weather has just been absolutely perfect. No issues at all. Oh, these tunnels. where you can't see anything. Yeah, now we have no electricity again. Because when there is electricity, these tunnels are actually lit up. But <laughs> without electricity, even cell phone towers don't work. To say nothing about the tunnels or <laughs> the lighting tunnels. But the road is beautiful. Just a couple of days ago I was thinking like, you know what, it's time for a real adventure. And then I found a couple of routes on Wikiluck and on iOverlander. iOverlander is uh, a really cool app where basically a lot of travelers, overlanders, whether it's by motorcycle, by bicycle, by, I don't know, SUV, whatever. <laughs> motorhome they leave some tips and uh, recommendations it can be anything real it can be a place to stay uh, some places to see it can be even some warnings about bad roads closed bridges um, gasoline stations anything really so any kind of information that can be helpful for an overlander or traveler you can find it there and I can say that here in Ecuador or generally in South America this app is used quite a lot so you can find a lot of tips there so yeah I found uh, these two routes which are these two off-road routes which are pretty much along the way and I decided to try them out Obviously, I have no idea how easy or difficult they are. <laughs> so, we're just gonna go and see. And somewhere here starts our off-road. Whoops. Maybe it's not all off-road. Maybe some of it is paved. <laughs> we'll see. I can see there is a cool bridge. There is another cool bridge there. Ah. <laughs> that one looks even cooler. <laughs> oh my god, this is awesome. Let's stop for a photo. <laughs> it's so cool. Look at this beauty. And let's keep going. 
so cool. Oh, this, I don't know, itchy, ticklish feeling of the unknown in front of us. I guess that's what you call adventure, right? Having no idea what you're signing up for and being very excited about it at the same time. <laughs> and it's getting pretty warm. We've just come down from like 1800 meters to, I don't know, something like 1200, I suppose. And I can really feel the difference back into the hot, humid Amazon area. So far, so good. But I think for a lot of trails in, I don't know, definitely Colombia and I think Ecuador as well, the difficulty level can vary a lot depending on whether it has rained or not. So the exact same track can be super easy in dry season and extremely challenging after a lot of rain. Like imagine if this was all mud, I would be struggling a little bit more than I am now. Not a bad view! <laughs> and we keep going down. This is quite steep. Ooh, so steep they even made the Placa Huella. I don't know what it's called in English. In Colombia they call it Placa Huella, where there are like these two cement tracks for the wheels of a car. And in the middle there is just a gap. Sometimes it's filled with rocks, sometimes it's grass. And this is getting somewhat more technical with lots of rocks. And a little bit of mud. So cute. Look how pretty. Super sweet. Woohoo! Splash it! <laughs> so beautiful, I love it. Kind of rocky part. Of course, it's a downhill. <laughs> okay. Not too bad. If you watched my season three in Colombia, you know that I'm a big fan of rocky downhills. This was, of course, a little bit of sarcasm, but look at the view. Whee! A rocky uphill now. Whoa, 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 whoa. So there are some kind of more challenging parts, but they're mostly short. But a super cool ride, really beautiful. And I can see some... Oh, interesting. Let's go check it out. So there is some kind of bridge or some kind of river crossing. So that's the bridge. And that's the river crossing. <laughs> I guess I'll be doing the bridge. <laughs> I don't feel like doing this. Bridge it is. Slightly sketchy, but hopefully not too bad. Now we're ready for this exciting experience. Whew. Woo! <laughs> 
awesome. <laughs> and I think we are going here. <laughs> we in Banos there were a lot of like what they call it extreme activities like zip lines walking over a glass bridge and something like that oh a little bit of a gap hill all right and I wasn't even tempted to do this stuff because for me on the scale of extreme adventures off-roading on a motorcycle is way more extreme <laughs> even crossing a bridge like this which was actually quite an easy bridge but you don't really know how easy it is until you actually cross it <laughs> so every time it's kind of a yeah, a little bit of yeah, tickler feeling <laughs> of whew, what am I doing? What am I signing up for? How challenging is it gonna be? <laughs> Whee! Sweetness! But once you succeed, you get an amazing feeling of, I don't know, happiness and fulfillment. Like, yay, we did it! Cherry and I, we did it! <laughs> Rock it downhill. Well, I can definitely say that the second half of the road is more challenging and technical than the first one. The first one I was just cruising with whatever, over 50 kilometers an hour and thinking like, yeah, this is life is so easy. Now I'm like, hmm, this life actually requires a little bit of effort. <laughs> Holy shit. Got out of gear. Oof. And downhill on neutral feels Quite extreme. So green. So beautiful. I think I can see another cool bridge. All right. Let's go cross this bridge. <laughs> sweet road wow that's a steep downhill full of loose rocks I thought this part was supposed to be kind of easy but not so much not as easy as I expected <laughs> all right like ruts and rocks and uh, <sighs> Woo! Sweet! And another bridge over another river. Or maybe it's the same river. And here what? Jump? <laughs> so cool. Whoa, I'm drifting. I'm learning to drift. <laughs> it's 11 a.m. I left at half past eight. And I can say I'm getting pretty hungry. 
So once I get onto the asphalt road and oh yo 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 shit 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 Wonderful. Alona, please check the map once in a while. <laughs> oh, I'm glad I was able to stop. <laughs> well, <laughs> I started thinking about food already, you know? I got distracted from the road. It seemed so nice and easy that I was like, yay! I'm just dreaming of lunch. Thank you, Cherry, for saving my butt. <laughs> Cherry is getting all the compliments, by the way. They're like, oh, your motorcycle is so beautiful. I'm like, yeah. Back in the days, people told me I was beautiful. Now, Cherry is. Oh, well, that's life. Cherry, you're beautiful. What can I say? You're stealing all the attention. This looks like a place that might have some food. This is just perfect. Lunch break and there is light, so I'm charging at the same time. All right, amazing lunch. I had almost a one hour break here, and now let's continue. I don't know how long <laughs> our route today is gonna be so we'd better have as much time as possible look 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 paved road or back in pavement for I don't know maybe 100 kilometers something like that This is one massive bridge. And there is another bridge. I like that bridge more. That bridge is much better. All right, let's continue. River Pastasa. You are very pretty, but I have to go. This is how the main road looks. It's not like a highway. It's really more like a back road. <laughs> and this is the main road, you know. <laughs> so called Troncal Amazonica. <laughs> and we're crossing Pastaza River again. Beautiful and a cool bridge. <sighs> After one and a half hours of uh, paved ride, I'm uh, kind of ready for more off road. Otherwise, you can see I'm a little bit bored here. Although, I mean, it's not too bad. It's a very, very pretty road. It's beautiful sunshine. I'm still full of the lunch. What else can I wish for? I wish for adventures. <laughs> Change of scenery. Getting closer to the mountains again. Oh, that's a sweet bridge. This is the town of Sukua, so I think I should be getting a coffee and a gasoline refill here before we move on to the off-road part. This place looks like 
they might have coffee. Let's see. Buenas. ¿Y café tiene? No. No coffee, no electricity, but a smoothie. Better than nothing, right? Super nice. This smoothie was wonderful. So, quick gasoline refill and let's go find that off road. All right, I got my smoothie, Cherry got her gasoline, let's go get that off-road. We're ready! And it looks like we'll be crossing the bridge. Wow. Look at this! Awesome river! Wow! Looking at this brand new pavement, I'm wondering if this is now a paved road, you know? <laughs> what I planned as an off-road adventure might have become a paved adventure. Well, we'll see. Anyway, it ends here. So now it's proper gravel road. Here we go. Wow. Well, we'll be following this river, River Upano. During the next whatever 40 kilometers, I guess. Kumbatsa. A tiny village with the most beautiful views ever. Normal life in a small village, not too far away from civilization, but it feels like a whole different universe, right? Yeah, again, I'm getting flashbacks to Philippines. I was riding there on an island of Busuanga. I think I spent a good couple of weeks on that island riding around, snorkeling, chilling, and then I went to another island, Shargao, and there I spent I think two months. I was surfing everywhere around the island so i had a scooter back then so i was riding all around and just really really enjoying i think that's when i really fell in love with motorcycles and riding just exploring and enjoying the beauty of the surroundings and to get to the best surf spots, you had to ride through a lot of mud, <laughs> through jungles, with quite a bit of adventure. So maybe that's where my love for off-road comes from as well. <laughs> oh, wow. Quite a lot of loose rocks here. And this was all in 2019 just before the corona started so yeah obviously when uh, the covid with all its restrictions hit the world and the flights got cancelled my very first idea was hey let's go get that motorcycle license and let's ride this world okay <laughs> this is a little bit steep and with quite a lot of loose rocks. So yeah, that's the start of my motorcycle explorations. That's the story. I guess I should be grateful to the pandemic for this change in my life. 
as weird as it sounds. Wow, this is like getting steeper and steeper and more and more loose rocks. And of course we have a stream crossing in the end. Okay, what would be the best strategy? Because we have kind of a steep part on the other side as well. Woo! Like a tractor! <laughs> well done! Well done, Cherry! Look at this view! Insanely beautiful. I can't help but stop for a tiny little second. Amazing! Oh my god! <laughs> oh, hello car! I think there will be another bridge somewhere. Maybe we should call this a day of bridges. Oh, I'm drifting! I'm drifting! Actually, I've been wanting to learn to drift for quite a while. So maybe today is my day. All these loose rocks, downhills, and bridges, of course. Lots of bridges. I'm curious to see what this one is going to be. Yeah, my favorite kind. Woohoo! I don't know why, but I feel like the exactly same beauty, but when you see it while riding a motorcycle, it looks way more beautiful. <laughs> I know it sounds stupid or crazy or both. Maybe because the time is limited. Like when you ride, you only have a split of a second to enjoy this beauty. And then you have your whole attention on it. Both eyes. Although you should have both eyes on the road. But for that tiny millisecond, you want to soak in all this beauty available. Whoop! Millisecond, <laughs> and I'm back on the road. <laughs> for some reason, us humans we always appreciate the limited resources more than the abundant ones. Why am I so philosophic today? I'm in a very special mood. I'm very happy, very calm, very content, very joyful. I love this day. I love this ride! <laughs> One more bridge! Whee! Sweetness! But after this bridge, the asphalt road starts. So, no. I'm turning around. And taking a photo. I think I'm getting better at this kind of rocky, bumpy uphills. Moving the weight back on the bike really helps. Oh wow. Amazing. I'm really not getting tired of these views. Look at that. I was just uh, passing through one of those small villages here and saw a whole lot of kids playing outside. Some kind of, I don't know, football. And it kind of made me miss those days when, you know, kids just played outside and not on their cell phones or with gadgets and it made me also reflect on the current electricity situation in Ecuador 
because uh, yesterday when I was in the hostel camping and uh, the lights went off so as I already said with electricity also the network connection disappears and you know everybody just becomes much more social everybody wants to communicate to talk to you know hang out to do something together and then the electricity goes on again look how beautiful so yeah the electricity goes on again and everybody disappears everybody's again with their cell phones you know checking updates and <laughs> the social atmosphere the whole hangout just you know dies out completely within minutes and it's such a big contrast you know just because lights on lights off you know whether there is access to the network or not and it completely changes the people's behavior slightly disturbing such a contrast look at this this super bright grass lit up by sunshine and the dark dark dramatic clouds in the background wow <laughs> and me trying to focus on the road <laughs> Amazing. Off-road is over. Paved road. Paved road. <laughs> I love this off-road. This was the best ride in Ecuador so far. Now what can I say? Great choice, Alona. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> I love it! <laughs> Hello! Don't run away, I'm not dangerous, don't worry. Don't worry. One more bridge crossing and we're back on the normal road. So it's 80 kilometers until our destination and a bit over an hour until sunset. It doesn't take complicated calculations to figure out that we should be going with a speed of 80 kilometers an hour to be able to make it before sunset. <laughs> Let's ride! Looks like a pretty fun road ahead. I can see many, many curves on my GPS. today first I get a super cool off-road then I get this super cool curvy road and now I get a little bit of traffic to remind me that we live in a real world <laughs> with real obstacles because I have no idea what's the time schedule for electricity in this region today <laughs> because like every region every municipality has its own uh, schedule for electricity cuts so if it's dark and there are no lights and I don't really know the road it's not going to be the best situation out there so yeah, I really don't want to risk riding an unknown road in complete darkness and I really want to get there before the sunset
and you just look at this. <laughs> Amazing. What a road. Wow. <laughs> this view, 360. All the way around. Look at this. San Juan Bosco. We have arrived 